for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff of the Mad Cheese, as always. Got a new video for you guys today. Today, I'm going to be going over coaching adjustments and uh, game planning, which is things that you can do um, to basically give yourself as much of an advantage as possible before the game even starts. Now, I'm mostly going to be focusing on defense because I think that's the thing that people have the most issues with. But as always, if you guys want to see more videos like this, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. I'll give you guys updates as the game changes and as these coaching adjustments change as well. So, first, we're going to start off with auto flip. This is something where in the past I was very adamant about making sure that you always took auto flip off especially when you're setting up blitzes I really felt that auto flip kind of got in the way but I don't know if EA over time just basically um, you know tuned auto flip to the point where it actually works really well I forget to take auto flip off nine times out of ten now and I haven't even noticed it used to be something they used to notice and they used to hate it. it would be the first thing I did when I bought a copy of Madden was turn auto flip off this year it's been on pretty much the entire year and I can't say I've really noticed so for me it only really becomes an issue when it's got when it, the auto flip kind of messes up the blitzing uh, you know cornerback or blitzing safety or whatever you're doing with a blitz as far as a defensive back like I said I feel like they tune that well enough that you can just leave it on now and it doesn't really matter but if you're running the same defense over and over you might want to have auto flip off uh, so that you can set it up how you want like I said I haven't really noticed it being an issue this entire year uh, and I might have not even noticed it as an issue last year so that's something you can really leave on now this next one here uh, when it comes to auto alignment uh, I think this one here is probably best to put on base now when you have it on default basically it'll give away your defense there's small little tells when it comes to uh, you know what you're coming out in like a cover three cover two man coverages all that stuff can give you tells base can be one of the better ways to hide that but it really works best if you're running a lot of zone coverages if you're running man coverages I find that base is gonna have your cornerbacks and your safeties and stuff like that out of alignment if you go to auto alignment man this here can really help if you're running a lot of man coverage this will have them aligned up well but it could also give you slight issues when it comes to run defense I'll show you guys what I'm talking about when it comes to base alignment here I could change to just about any defense and it's going to look the exact same where if the uh, the auto alignment was on you would notice some dramatic shifts now there we got a slight shift when it came to man coverage but ultimately this shell will look the same no matter what which is a huge advantage based off of what you're running like I said if you're running a man coverage though it can be a little bit of an issue because you don't want these guys being so far away from their targets this here would actually be a benefit if they aligned a little bit closer to where they're going to cover if you go with man alignment a lot of times it can help out when it comes to pass defense sometimes if you don't man align your best cornerback will be over on the right side here uh, covering a tight end or something like that in formations like this where if you do man align you'll see that you have your best cornerback on their best receiver but a lot of times it could leave you open when it comes to run defense like here uh, there's no cornerback outside here for run defense so if your opponent were to hit you with like a simple stretch or a toss or something like that there isn't as much uh, defense out here to basically stop that so that's something you really have to think about so when it comes to auto alignment I would say defaults probably the best if you like to mix between man and zone uh, and base would probably be the best if you like to run a lot of zone coverages if you're mixing between cover two three and four base will, will make sure that your uh, your pre-snap defense is a much harder defense to read now when it comes to ball in the air defense I would say it's a hundred percent best to make sure that you play the ball at any point in time you want to play the ball because to me it's best to try to always get interceptions if you play the receiver uh, you'll essentially just go for knockouts if you play for swatting the ball you can't really get any interceptions off of that although you can get like a tip pass that might get intercepted by another defender but ultimately at the end of the day I always said to play ball this is the, probably the most important one to me I want my cornerbacks to go after that ball a lot of times I'm going to be switching on anyway but if they're playing the ball they might be in a better position before I switch on to actually make sure that I can make an interception or make a play on the ball we want to get the ball you want interceptions that's how you win games in Madden it's not necessarily by by forcing your opponent to punt because a lot of times people don't punt next up we got cornerback matchups now when it comes to cornerback matchups 
Uh, it really depends on what your receivers have. This is something that can change every single game. Uh, ultimately, by overall makes the most sense if you have a really high, you know, high overall cornerback and they've got like a Devontae Adams or something like that. You're obviously going to want to try to match. If you're like a Jalen Rams or something like that, you're going to want to try to match your best cornerback versus their best receiver. That makes a lot of sense. But if they have somebody who's super fast, like a Tyreek Hill or, uh, you know, a, a McCole Hardman, a, a Hollywood Brown, and your cornerback, it may be a superstar cornerback or not, but if you don't match speed-wise, you're going to get burnt. So a lot of times you're going to want to put your fastest cornerback on those types of receivers. So it really depends on the receivers that are on the field. You really have to know the match before you can pick uh, you also have by height if you're going against somebody like Mike Williams or something like that you want to put your tallest guy on their tallest receiver a lot of times so they can't out jump you for balls uh, route running once again if you have a guy like Devontae Adams you want to put on somebody who has maybe your your best man coverage or your best zone coverage to try to eliminate those type of um, separation that's created by great route running receivers uh, and then by death chart is obviously pretty much by default uh, so that's pretty much balanced. So this is something that really can change. I can't give you guys a straight answer. You kind of have to know who you're playing because this is something that could change every single game based off of who the receivers are on the other side of the field. Now, when it comes to option defense, I hear people say that it's always best to go on conservative. And I I tend to agree because ultimately when it comes to uh, run defense, if you're in a man coverage, especially uh, a lot of times there's nobody assigned to the quarterback because that's how man defense is run. There's no man coverage defender assigned to the quarterback so if you're running man coverages it really makes uh you know option run plays with the quarterback very easy so it always makes sense to go conservative as far as i'm concerned i tend to agree uh, if somebody's running a lot of pitch plays like i like to run a lot of pitch plays i would say that would be the time that you'd want to run aggressive and go with um you know basically focusing on the actual pitch itself uh because the pitch plays in this game are very overpowered so this is something once again uh it really based off of what you do if you like to run a lot of man coverage you got to go conservative if you like to run a lot of zone coverage you can get away with going aggressive uh, but ultimately, conservative is probably the better of the two. Now, when it comes to strip ball, this is something where I pretty much just leave it on balance most of the game. But if you have to try to force a fumble, aggressive is going to give you the best opportunity to do that. I still feel like you end up with a lot of face mask penalties. I think this is something that they have to really tune down. Tackling is pretty similar, but ultimately here, if you're trying to force fumbles... Uh, this is the one that has the lesser of the two penalties because you won't get an actual face mask penalty. You'll get, um, you know, they'll, they'll fake you out more or they'll break your tackles more, but you'll get more fumbles with hit sticks, which is what most people like to use anyway. So this is something you can actually put on the entire game if you really want to force fumbles the same way I was saying earlier about trying to get interceptions. Turnovers are really key. So if you want to get more fumbles in the entire game without less, without actually getting 15 yard penalties, Tackling on aggressive is one of the better ways to go. Now, as far as conservative, um, this is something that you're just going to, you know, basically secure the tackle, but there is the chance that your opponent will, um, you know, get that fall forward animation for a couple yards, which obviously can be key if it's like a second and short or third and short or whatever, and you're trying to stop them. Those fall forward animations where they basically carry your defender for like five yards is a huge deterrent. So you have to be conscious of that when you go into to conservative tackling. If it's like a third and short, obviously you want to take that off uh, and go back to just balanced. Uh, because that you don't want that fall forward animation in those in those critical situations like you know fourth and inches or something like that you got to make sure you take that off a lot of the stuff is really situational especially with the stuff i'm going to get into going forward which is going to be zone drops zone drops this is probably one of my biggest questions when it comes to what do i set my zone drops one of the biggest questions in my comments what do you set your zone drops to uh, i don't really touch zone drops so i'm going to tell you guys why in a minute i try to leave zone drops off for the majority of the game unless i'm running a specific defense or i run a specific opponent opponent's that like to run specific routes or specific, specific um, crossers and stuff like that that I really need to set my zone drops to. Typically, I leave my zone drops alone because there's a huge downside to setting your zone drops. If you set your zone drops to 30, say, uh, you can't change that in, in the play. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna show you guys what I'm talking about. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put uh, Cover Through Sky on here. And then on the offensive side, we're just gonna pick, uh, you know, whatever, pick, pick the mesh spot. So this year, I got my zone drops set to, uh, to, to 30. So if I wanna, out of nowhere, if I say, you know what, I'm gonna, I've seen this formation before, I'm gonna hard flat. You're gonna see how these zone drops still drop back to 30 without me having any option after the play starts now boom he's hitting it with an easy drag based off the fact that i might have recognized that it doesn't really matter based off the fact that my zone drops are already set now there is one thing you can do if you see uh pre-snap you want to make that adjustment you want to change your coverage to hard flats you can
can reset your zone drops mid uh, play once you get into the pre-snap here by hitting wire to triangle then hitting LB or L1 with your Xbox or PlayStation and that will reset the zone drops uh, so basically if you do see something you want to make a quick adjustment that is one extra step which a lot of times a lot of people don't have time to do if somebody's running a base play without making any adjustments you can always play sticks and reset your zone drops pre-snap and now you'll see those hard flats will react like I expect them to at a much uh, lower depth so that's something that is definitely helpful and definitely a, a tip to remember so I pretty much like to leave uh, my flats and my hooks alone for the most part although the hooks I can tap I mean this is something once again it's gonna change throughout the game I'm gonna alter this throughout the game but if I'm running like a Mabel concept out of cover three which is something that you know the meta 335 wide that a lot of people like to do uh, then I'll set my zone drops to either zero or five and my crow flats to 25 or 30 uh, if I notice my opponents running a lot of plays to a certain depth to the field I will try to set my curl flats to that as well this is pretty much going to be my setup if I'm running a Mabel style defense which I'll show you guys here uh, what I'm talking about so if you if you don't know now you know but a lot of times I'll run my 335 wide this is one of the meta defenses I'll go with the three Sam will blitz uh, on the offensive side let's just go random play here because I'm not going to run the play but ultimately if I want to run a Mabel concept which is something like this then I want my my hard flats of five or zero which is obviously going to take away anything short and then my seams will take away anything deep with this with like a 25 sometimes I'll go 20 sometimes I'll go 25 this is one of the better ways to do that and then last but not least we have zone drop hooks now me I think 10 is probably the best if it's like third and 15 or something like that you can always change that and drop it back or if it's you know if they're going third and long or you know so they got 20 yards to go you can always mirror that to the depth but I would say 10 makes the most sense because I always want to try to keep receiving options in front of me so if they catch a ball at about a five yard depth you can always have uh, guys just slightly behind it but when it comes to this a lot of times I'll just leave this to default so that's something where if I if I want to keep everything in front of me I'll go 10 but ultimately default is probably one of the better ways to go so just to go over this one more time this is my preferred setup this is something that I would say would be best to run throughout the entire game uh, auto flip doesn't really matter leave that on auto line I run a lot of zones so I would say base would be the best for me uh, when it comes to play ball in the air I always want to you know when it comes to that I'm always going to play the ball when it comes to cornerback matchups, I typically go speed because that's that can be the biggest uh, glaring issue if you don't have a fast enough cornerback. Option defense, I typically go conservative. Strip ball, I typically go conservative because I don't want penalties. And then if you want to try to force more fumbles, tackling on aggressive will give you the best chance without the biggest uh, pe you know penalty to incur. You won't get any type of penalty at all. Then comes to uh, flats, I'll go five. Curl flats, 25. And hook, I'll go uh, default. Now on the offensive side, I won't really touch a lot of these. That's why I say this for last. This is a lot of stuff I don't touch. I don't typically touch either one of the catching ones because these are all functions that you can do during the play. Whether you want to go aggressive or conservative, um, I can do all these things during the play. I can rack catch or I can aggressive catch uh, with the controller function. So there's no real sense there. When it comes to blocking, though, if you're if you like to run the ball a lot, uh, you can really um, kick it up a notch with aggressive. Now you'll get some penalties from time to time, but you'll do you'll get better blocking when it comes to running and passing. Uh, this one here is another thing where it's like I, I don't know if it's worth it because of all the penalties. So that's why I typically leave it to balanced ball carrier though this is probably one of the few where I'll actually uh, use from time to time where I'll either go conservative or aggressive if it's late in the game you want to protect the ball you want to go conservative you won't fumble as much uh, and if it's uh, you know if you're just trying to make big plays you can put it on aggressive although you'll increase your chance of fumbling uh, which once again isn't necessarily worth it because I don't want to give the ball up so aggressive might help you get better uh, you know bigger plays and break more tackles but to me I'm gonna leave most of this on balanced uh, because it just doesn't make a ton of sense conservative ball carry makes the most sense though to protect the ball but you can see it disables uh, you know pretty much everything except for cover ball mechanics so is it really worth it not a hundred percent sure ultimately balance is probably the best way to go on offense so that's it that's the video if you guys want to see more videos like this as always hit the like button let me know in the comment section and i'll put more out from time to time other than that thanks for watching man my shit out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more link in the description below